Hello everyone. I am Archana Bruzwale, Assistant Professor in Computer Engineering Department, AISSMS Institute of Information Technology, Pune. Okay. So in this video, we are going to discuss the critical path method, CPM method. The theory concept we'll see over here. In this video, in the next video, we are going to see the example for the CPM. We will continue with the CPM. Okay, so what is the critical path method? So the critical path method is basically, is, it is a method to find out the critical path. So what is that exactly? So the critical path method is a simple but powerful technique for analyzing, planning, and scheduling the large complex project. It is mainly used to determine the project's critical path. So what is the critical path? The critical path in project management is basically the longest sequence of activities that must be finished on time to complete the entire project. Means those activities cannot be delayed by even a single day. Otherwise, it will impact the overall project's completion date. So any delays in critical tasks will delay the rest of the project. It can be, it cannot be delayed by the one day or whatever, whatsoever. Means if the one day, then whole project will be delayed by the one day of, or the one month, depending on what time you, you are using. So CPM revolves around discovering the most important task in project timeline, identifying the task dependencies, and calculating the task durations. It discovers the project timeline, identifying the task dependencies, and calculating the task durations, and accordingly find the critical path. So CPM was developed in the late 1950s as a method to resolve the issue of increased costs due to inefficient scheduling. So since then, the CPM has become a popular tool or the algorithm you can say for planning the projects and prioritizing the tasks. So it helps you break down the complex projects into individual tasks and gain a better understanding of the project's flexibility. So the critical path method is defined in the PMBOK as follows. You already know the PMBOK that is a project management body of knowledge. So according to PMBOK, uh, the CPM was uh, is defined as the critical path method is a sequence of scheduled activities that determines the duration of the project. That determines the duration of the project. How it determines the duration of the project? Because it determines the critical path, the longest sequence of activity. So at the end of that longest sequence of activities, we can determine the overall duration of the project. Means how much time the project is going to actually take to complete it. So these scheduled activities must be performed if the project is to be considered a success and moreover they the, all the activities must be performed or completed in a specific order for example if you are building a house you can't construct the walls first and then dig the foundation you can't change the sequence you need to first dig the foundation and then construct the walls and then have the slab and plaster to the walls like this so you have to do these activities in a sequence so the important <coughs> bit to understand is that the CPM describes the longest sequence of tasks in the project. That is, in any project, we will have multiple task sequences. The CPM will describe or identify the sequence of tasks that takes the most time or the long longest time, you can say. So that is the basics about the CPM. So now how to find the critical path using the CPM? So when we are saying using we are you are using the CPM. So first thing is what finding the critical path involves looking at the duration of the critical as well as non-critical task. And to apply the CPM, that is a critical path method, we just follow the simple six steps process we follow to get the critical path at the end of this method. So what are those simple six steps? So those steps are the first step is list the activities or specify each activity so when we are saying list activities or specify each activity what we have to do exactly we need to use a wbs to list out the activity that is a work breakdown structure we need to use to list out the activities then the second process is that sequence the activity so based on the wbs which we got in the in the step one so based on the wbs we have to determine the tasks that are dependent on one another so basically, we have to sequence the activities according to the dependency between each other. The next one is the third one, create a network diagram. So it is a basically the when we are saying the network diagram is what it is a flowchart which displays the chronology of activities. In what order we have to perform them. So it basically displays the chronology of activities. 
the next one that is the fourth that is the estimate activity duration so estimation here when you are saying estimate activity duration the estimate can be made based on the previous data the industry standards the past experiences so based on that we can estimate the activity duration or alternatively we can use the forward pass and backward pass to estimate the activity duration the next step that is identify the critical path so the when we are saying identify the critical path means what is the sequence of activities with the longest duration that is a critical path so that we have to find out here identify over here and the last step that is calculate the flow so what is the float here so the float or slack or float can also be called as a slack which refers to the amount of flexibility of a given task means amount of flexibility of given task means if there is a float of 5 days then there is a flexibility in completion of the task or in the starting of the task that i can delay the uh, start of the task by 5 days or i can delay the completion of the task at task by 5 days so this kind this kind of flexibility is there okay so here is the graphical process of the finding the critical path these all the six steps process we already discussed now why use the critical path method as we have seen the basics of critical path method what is the cpm what are the process what is the process exactly to find the critical path using the cpm so now why use the critical path method basically so cpm can provide valuable insights on how to plan the projects allocate the resources and schedule the tasks so this is the one thing that we should use cpm in the project management and, and there are many other reasons also so some reasons are listed over here you can see that why uh, here are some reasons why you should use this method so the first reason is it improves the future planning so when we are saying it improves the future planning what it exactly does the cpm can be used to compare the expectations with the actual progress so the data used from the current projects can inform the future project plan so whatever data used here in the current project can inform the future project plan so accordingly it improves the future planning for the same project or for the future projects as well the second one it facilitates the more effective resource management so cpm helps project managers prioritize the tasks giving them a better idea of basically how and where to deploy the resources so better resource management can be done with the help of cpm so that is one reason we can say why to use the cpm and another one is it helps avoid the bottlenecks so bottlenecks basically in the project can result uh, in lost valuable time so plotting out the project dependencies using a network diagram will gives us a better idea of uh, which activities can and can't run in parallel okay and which allows us to schedule accordingly so based on this we can identify the parallel activities or the activities which are dependent on each other which can they can run simultaneously so this kind of things uh, we can avoid with the help, we can avoid those bottlenecks with the help of cpm so here some more detail about the cpm we'll discuss so cpm provides vis visibility into your project's progress allowing you to monitor the task and their completion time so if i want to describe the cpm in one sentence we can say cpm that is a critical path method is to plan display and track the progress of the project it is also used to compress the schedules so when we are saying compress the schedule so there are different approaches are used to compress the schedules though these approaches are not ideal but there are some times when the project deadlines may be pushed up so in those situations there are two schedule compression techniques we can use and those two techniques are the first one is a fast tracking and second one is a crashing so the fast tracking means what uh, we need to look at the critical path to determine activities that can be performed simultaneously means find out the activities which can run in parallel so that way we can make the activities run in parallel and we can speed up the overall process overall duration so we can reduce the duration so that is the one way the second way is crashing so this process involves allocating the more resources to speed up activities before obtaining more resources make sure that it would still be within the project scope and let the stakeholders know of any changes so in this way also we can uh, we can compress the schedule so having the critical path method plotted plotted out 
can help you choose the appropriate strategy to meet the updated deadlines. Now, next we'll see the critical path method versus the PERT chart or the PERT diagram. So here is the difference. You can see the PERT manages the uncertain project activities, whereas CPM manages the predictable project activities. PERT focuses on meeting or minimizing the project duration, whereas the CPM focuses on time cost trade-offs. PERT is a probabilistic model. CPM is a deterministic model. The PERT uses the three-point estimates for each activity, whereas the CPM uses just one-time estimate. So these are some differences between the CPM and the PERT chart or network diagram. Apart from differences or aside the differences, the PERT and CPM both are having some similarities and both analyze the components, uh, so following components it analyzes, it analyzes the list of required tasks, estimated duration for each task, task dependencies, it analyzes. So both perform, analyze these following components over here. So the two techniques can be used in tandem to boost their effectiveness. So you can use the PERT to get more realistic estimate of task duration before proceeding to calculate the critical path and loads. 